here to fight fires and to help keep you safe. <laughs> Squirrel. Do you know someone who wants to be a firefighter? Or do you want to be a firefighter? Well, today I'm going to be talking all about firefighters. And I have a special surprise later on in the video. So let's get started. So when did firefighters actually start fighting fires? Well, in 1736, Benjamin Franklin established the Union Fire Company in Philadelphia. And something that I bet you didn't know is that George Washington was a volunteer firefighter in Virginia. Did you know that in America, there are over a million firefighters? So why are fire trucks red? Well, one of the most practical reasons is because red is a color that stands out in the dark and in the light, so it can easily be seen. But why are you sitting here watching me talk about firefighters? Why don't we actually go talk to some real firefighters? Um, so this is Station 5. Uh, opened in the spring of 1963, but in continuous service since then. Uh, this area was, was remodeled about two years ago. The engine bay, though, is all original, just like it was in 1963. Really no changes out there at all. Uh, station 5 is the busiest station in the city. Uh, we answer around 2,000 calls per year for service. Uh, probably almost 80% of those are for EMS. Uh, you know, we respond to emergency medical calls, uh, vehicle wrecks, hazardous materials, structure fires. Of course, we still fight fire, but we do a lot more now than just uh, uh, just fight fire. Uh, kind of expanded our service. We've heard that same kind of question a lot. Well, why do you get a fire truck when we've got ambulances? First of all, we got fire trucks. There's eight stations in the city, so we get there faster. Uh, we have all the same equipment they do. Every station right now is staffed with a paramedic, so we can start IVs. We've got 12 lead EKGs that we can transmit straight to the hospital so the physician can see that. Uh, we've got all your first-line cardiac drugs. Everything that used to have to wait, you know, the first 30 minutes to an hour in the ER, we bring to the, your house now. The firefighters are the first ones to deliver EMS in the field in the United States. Engine 5, uh, of course, primary still set up as, as a fire truck. Uh, we've got 750 gallons of water. We have a 1,250-gallon-a-minute uh, pump, so we can deliver a lot more water than we have on the truck very quickly. But on the back of the truck and the top, we have what we call a large diameter hose. We connect to uh, fire hydrants. We can get water straight out of the fire hydrants. Within the city, uh, we're very lucky to have a good uh, water system. So pretty much anywhere we go, we've got a uh, fire hydrant located nearby, excellent water supply, so we don't have to worry about running out of water. Uh, we have two pre-connected, what we call, Cross lays or fast attack lines. These are inch and three quarters. They deliver about 175 gallons of water a minute. So we put out a lot of water real fast. Up top, we have what we call our deck gun. It's uh, really for real large fires. It'll pump 1,250 gallons a minute just out of that one pipe. Uh, kind of you asked about our rescue equipment. We can show you that. We have here the saw pre plumbed. Uh, it's a hydraulic power unit. We have a cutter and a spreader. These were actually bought last year, so they're up to date with uh, being able to cut anything on new cars. There's some uh, new materials they're starting to use in, in auto construction, like boron. It's a super hardened steel. Some of the old cutters won't actually cut through that, but these will cut boron. They'll cut pretty much anything uh, we have. And we have our spreaders. These were the first thing called the Jaws of Life. They actually spread at the tip with about 32,000 PSI. So pretty much anywhere we can get the tip into, you can open a car door up, you can move something, whatever else. Fantastic tools for wrecks. Uh, we've got a couple more on the back that we hook up as we need. So we've got our hydraulic rounds here. So if you had a dash of a car that was trapping somebody, Use those rounds and they'll spread up to about four feet to be able to put This is Mike and he's going to be putting on his fire suit. Fire truck. 
48 hours off. They just got a call and now they are leaving. interview with the firefighters they had to leave because they were called on scene which was actually a very interesting thing to watch but they had to leave very quickly so we had to leave very quickly too so right now I'm going to be talking to you about fire safety tips the number one fire safety tip is to never play or be around anything that could be dangerous and start a fire so matches or lighters you should never be around without your parent Fire safety tip number two, never hide and go outside. That means that if there's a fire in a building, you should not hide inside the building. You should go outside. Which reminds me of fire safety tip number three. You and your family needs a fire plan. That means if something were to happen at your house and there's a fire, each family member knows exactly where to go and what to do. If you need a planning worksheet for that, you can head on over to this lesson plan at bringingsmartbag.com and there's a planning sheet where you can make a plan. Safety tip number four, if there's smoke, make sure you crawl on the ground. That way you don't inhale the smoke and it doesn't make you cough and get sick. And lastly, fire safety tip number five, make sure you always call 911. That way the firemen and the rescuemen and the police officers can come to the scene of the fire and help you. Before I go, I want to give a huge thank you to Fire Station Number 5 for letting me come out there and interview you. It was so fascinating to see what you do, and I hope that everyone watching learned so much about firefighters and fire safety. So to all the firefighters out there, thank you so much for all you do for our communities. I hope everyone watching enjoyed the video and I hope that you learned something new. Don't forget to head on over to www.bringingsmartback.com for a lesson plan on this video and all the other videos. Also down in the description below I'll have a link to our Pinterest account that has a board on this video and all the other videos. I hope to see you guys next Wednesday and I hope you have a great week. Bye! Squirrel!